Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Inga Hansen, editor of Metastetics Magazine. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can type them into the box on the right-hand side of the screen, and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. Today we'll be discussing defensins and topical skin care and how they can help activate stem cell markers in the skin to reduce photo damage and improve skin health, how to identify patients who will drive the most benefit from these actives, and how to incorporate Defenage, which includes the defensins, into home care regimens and in-office procedure protocols. Our presenter today is board-certified dermatologist and founder of Curcio Dermatology in Nashville, Dr. Natalie Curcio. Dr. Curcio is a Castle Connolly top doctor in dermatology and 2017 recipient of the Exceptional Women in Medicine and Dermatology Award. She currently serves on the AAD Congressional Policy Committee, ASDS Membership Work Group, and the ASDS Product and Service Development Work Group. Welcome, Dr. Curcio. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining. Um, we're going to go ahead and a little overview about what we're today. Um, we're by discussing um, cells in the skin to focus a little more specific and what they, we're going to discuss the Dev product line, review some of the clinical by Defenage. We're going to talk about some Defenage and incorporate Defenage. And first, we're going to begin with stem cells and we're in the skin. So the stem cell types would be pluripotals, which most of us are with is the embryonic cells, birth associated stem cells, uh, which most of as the placental stem cell, cord stem cells, include neural stem cells. And then the adults, which are the basal cells of the skin, cells and stem cells which bone marrow stromal cells and the adipose mesenchymal stem cells. Fit to adult stem cells that there's minimal or no and their quick development. Jobs of these adult cells will be maintenance. They replace the exhausted cell tissues and organs. So when we're talking about Basal cell layer and it produces new. The sub is um, trauma Dr. repair, Cruzio? replacement of damaged cells. So when your skin becomes dead and you have a hole in your abdomen, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, I think your speaker is breaking up a little bit. We're having difficulty hearing you. So um, cells repair the. Turn up the volume. Is that better? Yes, I think that's helping. Is that better? Yes, that's much better. Thank you. Um, trauma repair or replace. Okay, trauma repair or some damage. So when your skin becomes and it has a hole in your app, these hair follicle stems that repair the wound. So, these are dermatologic. So, stem cells, keratinocytes. Then, the cells, of which they're, they're located bulge on the hair, and they're responsible for skin homeostasis. And the cell the bulge are responsible for the hair growth. Then the LGR6 pod cells are the skin's master stem cells. So these are six positive stem cells known as the skin's master cells give rise to all lineages of the They establish your in the pre-period and used to establish the new cells in wound healing. And this is shown in several basic articles. About old versus um, with respect to proliferation and damage. The 
going to acquire mutants much more rapidly than dormant cells. So when we look at the base cells of the skin, they proliferate during life. They acquire extensive bands. Most common think of photo damage, ultraviolet light. They become old and exhausted by acquiring numeration. Pair these to the LGR stem cells. Stay dormant throughout life and only wake up and wound healing. Acquire a minimal number of compared to cells that are concentrating and turning over. Produce new and fresh cell wound healing because of damage. Shown in numerous basic patients. So acquired cause multiple in skin cell function. Left, you can see old basal stem cells, keratinocyte dermis. The carrot change with age. So, differentiation, signaling, and growth, and low barrier function. Hi, Dr. Christo. I'm so sorry. To young bees, they're making active in keratinocytes epidermis. Hello? Hi, it's Inga. I'm sorry to interrupt again. The, the sound quality is we're losing you. Again, and just wanted to check in and, and see if maybe yeah. the microphone yeah. could be moved a little bit. Do you want me to turn the volume? I'm not sure. Is this? I turned it up. A little bit like better? the phone's breaking in and out, so we're losing a few words and then getting a few words. So, so maybe if it's on a, a microphone, it needs to be moved closer. It's a, it's a regular tell, so it's pretty close. I'm not. Okay, let's try it with that. Does this sound any better? I heard that clearly, so let's see. I'm gonna move on to the discuss of what okay, of what are defensives. So defensives are messaging peptides. Defensives message the LGR six positive cells to wake up and build new baby cells. Defensives are anti peptides released by neutrophils in wounds. Defensins are peptides, but not growth factor. And you can see on this chart that the peptides are by ones that are kinds to create proteins and ones antimicrobial peptides. Defensins fall into the category of antimicrobial peptides. And the two defensins that we're talking about today are the alpha and beta defensins. So as we mentioned, the newly created basal stem cells produce fresh keratinocytes the rest of your life. The immune system neutrophils release defensins that activate these LGR6 positive stem cells. Activated stem cells create the new basal stem cells, and the newly ba created basal cells are what produce the fresh keratinocytes that last forever. So how exactly do defensins activate these LGR6 positive stem cells and slow the signs of aging? Defensins slide through the skin's pores on a hair follicle to reach their target. Then they use a target-specific mechanism to do a very specific job, to generate these new basal cells in the epidermis to repopulate the epidermis with fresh cells. Because of this highly specific act activation, there are no known side effects applying defensins to the skin. So then you may wonder, well, what products are available so that I could apply defensins to my skin? So the company Naj has two products currently available with defensins. The combination of products that you use together. This one is their 24 barrier repair cream and their eight in one bio serum. So the 24-7 barrier cream contains age repair defense in an ultra hydrating yet lightweight cream. This moisturizer repairs cell membranes 
and initiates improvement in repairing the tight junction between the keratinocytes. The 8 in 1 bioserum is a biologically concentrate infused highest daily percent of age repair defenses. It contains five times more defensins than the cream and has a global anti-aging benefit. It decreases trans epidermal water la loss, so it doesn't allow water to leave your skin, but by tightening up those junctions between keratinocytes, it also does not allow other products to penetrate your skin. The product the Definage makes that does not contain defensins is a two-minute reveal. This is an ultra-fine sugar crystal uh, mask um, that's in a gentle warming uh, creamy formulation that's meant to use one to twice a week for gentle exfoliation. And all three products come as a clinical power trio, either in the trio of the full-size products, um, a fly kit, which is meant for a two-week use during travel, or in a 24-hour fast starter kit. So what are some of the common skin issues addressed by Definage? So some of the skin issues that this product and these products address include um, signs of skin aging on a global scale, scale. And this would include, for best results, the combination of the products, the barrier balance cream and bioserum. The products are completely non comedogenic, do not clog pores or cause breakouts. So anyone who wants to begin a global anti-aging regimen is a candidate to use Ethanol's product line. So dryness. The cream is ultra hydrating, let lightweight. So it's great in the most dry skin texture. The product provides a useful texture, increased smoothness to the skin. Wrinkles. It minimizes both fine lines and deeper rises. Pores. It decreases pore size, oiliness. And as many of us know, it's very, very difficult to find any kind of product or laser or procedure that decreases pores. Pigment. It decreases brown spots, brightens up the skin tone, evens the skin tone, and increases clarity of the skin. Redness. It calms inflammation, redness, and skin that's very sensitive. It's very, very helpful in many patients with rosacea. And laxity. It restores firmness and the elasticity of youthful skin. So as you can see, it really does address anti-aging on a global scale. So what are some of the clinical studies that have been used with Definage? So there have been three completed clinical studies. The first um, is a pilot open label with double-blinded studies. The principal investigator was Gregory Keller. There were 22 patients total, both men and women. There was the double-blinded studies that had um, two groups of 10 participants between 48 and 68 years old, the average age of 56, and it was skin types two, three, and four. The second uh, was an open label study with 12 participants between 47 and 67 years old, with an average age of, 50, age of 58 with skin types two, three, and four. The second study we're going to talk about in greater detail was a multi-center, double-blinded, placebo-controlled study that was just published in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology April of this year. And that was led by investigator um, Taub. And then the third uh, studies have been multiple formal, informal in-house studies by various physicians. So this has been presented uh, by the head investigator during scientific sessions at professional conferences. So the first one, it was a multi-center blind vehicle controlled trial of the alpha beta defense and containing anti-aging skincare regimen with clinical histopathological, immunohistochemical, photographic, and ultrasound evaluation. It was held at three centers. Um, the clinical sites were those of Amy Taub, Vivian Bukai and Gregory Keller. They evaluated the skin at baseline six weeks and 12 weeks. They had 45 participants, um, females, 14 to 16 per site. One in three received placebo and two out of three received the full Definage formula. Ages ranging from 41 to 71 with a mean age of 60 years. And like we mentioned, various um, histologic and other photographic 
uh, ultrasound technologies were used to evaluate the skin. The regimen that everybody used it was the Clinical Power Trio, which as we discussed earlier, included the Barrier Balance Cream, the Bioserum, and the Two Minute Reveal Mask. And placebo group received the identically packaged regimen without the active ingredients. And everyone used the same cleanser and sunscreen. So what they saw um, in these patients was an improvement of the skin on a global scale. The five statistically significant findings included increase in epidermal thickness in the absence of any excessive proliferation or inflammation, reduction in pores and oiliness, reduction in fine and coarse wrinkles, improvement in the evenness of the skin, and that also includes um, texture, and then a reduction in hyperpigmentation. Findings that were trends without statistical significance included improvements in the intrigger, decrease in transepidermal water loss, and increased dermal thickness. So here's a picture of the increased epidermal thickness with the full formula after 12 weeks. Um, you can see that the actual overall thickness of the epidermal decrease, and you can see formation of reedy ridges, which is a sign of more youthful skin as the skin ages and atrophies. You see blunting of the reedy ridges. And this finding was also seen at the six week uh, biopsies. So here you can see the reduction in the visible pores in the skin at baseline and after six weeks. And none of the photos have been retouched. And here you can see a reduction in the visible wrinkles after six weeks. And again, none of the photos uh, with the wrinkles here have been retouched as well. And here's a nice person to look at with um, a reduction in visible wrinkles using this for, full formula regimen at six weeks. Um, you can definitely see an improvement in the texture of her skin. Um, both her fine and deeper wrinkling has improved. Um, she has an improvement in her hyperpigmentation. Some of her redness is reduced. She's got a little bit improvement in laxity and just an overall improvement in the youthfulness to her skin. Um, here's a patient with some um, hyperpigmentation in their skin, and you can see an overall decrease in that excess of pigment and a decrease in the amount of melanin in her skin. This was at baseline and 12 weeks. And again, another patient, global scale improvement, full formula, decrease in deeper rightids, finer wrinkling, um, skin texture, hyperpigmentation, um, and overall, you know, wiping the years off the face and really turning the clock back. Um, this is um, a single patient um, that was presented by Dr. Diane Duncan out of Fort Collins, Colorado. She did a single microneedling treatment plus three single applications of the eight in one bio serum to this person's forearm. And you can see the baseline photo and then eight weeks later, they had a significant improvement in the texture, crepiness, fine lines, and even pigment in their forearms. So, you know, very impressive results beyond what you would traditionally see with one simple microneedling treatment. And this is one of my favorite photos. Um, it was um, the spouse of this Dr. Norman Pasterak out of New York, New York. They decided um, to take an outside picture to look at the crinkling and crepiness of the forearm skin. And you can see the left arm that she had been treating for five days with the barrier cream and serum had already improved in appearance uh, versus the right arm. And then in the second photo, it was over three months after they'd been using the cream plus serum uh, just on the left arm versus the right arm. And it's, it's really a staggering difference. And when you, know, when you show patients this picture, I've had people who just wanted the product for their arms 
more than they wanted it for their face because they were really tired of having thin, crepey skin on arms and hands. So how can you incorporate definage into your practice? So when somebody comes in for a cosmetic co consultation, some people really want the most simple regimen for the maximal result. So what I recommend for those patients is that they use the Definage 24-7 Barrier Balance Cream plus the 8-in-1 Bio Serum twice daily for global anti-aging. Most of those people will also walk out, you know, with the Clinical Power Trio and they will use the um, two-minute reveal mask once or twice a week as well. Um, they will also purchase a sunscreen because the Definage products do not contain sunscreen and an antioxidant serum twice daily. And you can, with this very simple regimen, achieve fantastic results. And these people tend to be extraordinarily happy. Well, what about the patient that wants a more complex regimen? Some people want to use more things. Some people may have a product that they're already in love with that they don't want to give up. Or they may have a more complex uh, cosmetic issue or issues that they're dealing with. So these people tend to want to add Definage to an existing regimen or just combine multiple products. So for these patients, I tend to recommend the Definage 24-7 Barrier Balance Cream plus the 8-in-1 Bio Serum at night. And then many of them are already on a micropeptide or growth factor product that they use in the morning. Everybody, of course, uh, recommends sunscreen for daily use as needed. And then an antioxidant serum twice a day. And then for patients that need a more, you know, targeted product like eye cream, neck cream, additional skin brighteners, et cetera, they can add these to the regimen to address additional concern. And um, some news hot off the press for Definage lovers, um, they are going to be launching an eye cream in the first quarter of 2019, so stay tuned for that. And then I really love to use Definage post-procedure. Um, I use a lot of um, fractional blade over surfacing with radio frequency, um, like the Fractor device by InMode, uh, or for people who do a lot of uh, microneedling with RF. So many people are already using the Definage combination of the cream plus bio serum prior to the procedure. So um, when you're doing ablative resurfacing, we have people stop that for the 48 hours post-procedure. I usually put them on a micropeptide product that's safe for immediate post-procedure when the um, fine holes in the skin are still open. What they can do is resume application of the 8-in-1 bio serum twice daily when the fine holes in the skin have completely closed and the epidermis has re-epithelialized. And that's usually 48 hours post-procedure. And then after one week, when the skin has fully healed, um, and that's for the uh, type of uh, fractional blade of resurfacing that I do, might be longer if you're using CO2 or other uh, procedures, then they can resume the original skincare regimen with the Definage. So I would like to um, give a special thank you to Nikolai Turovitz, the CEO of Definage, um, for all of the wonderful information that he has shared with me over the years about the product and for all of his wonderful work. Great. Thank you so much and, um, for this presentation. And we do have a number of questions that have been coming in that we wanted to share with you. And one is you had talked about using the antioxidant serum in addition to the Definage Trio. And one question is, do you apply the serum before or after the Definage product? Okay, that, that's a great question. So <clears throat> the cream plus serum are applied um, back to back, first the cream, then the serum, because the serum closes the tight junctions in your skin. So anything you would apply after the serum cannot get in. So the only things you should apply after would be like sunscreen or makeup, which you don't want to penetrate in your skin. So whether you're using a skin brightener, antioxidant serum, anything like that, it all has to be applied before you put the Definage products on. That's an excellent question. Great. Right. And also, um, in the clinical studies, these were six weeks of use. And so uh, one attendee had a question, do you continue to use these? Um, indefinitely or after your initial six weeks, is there a different plan for maintenance? Um, uh, 
Uh, that's a great question. And I, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, in the in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology study, they had six and 12 week time points. Um, so that w they did finish it through 12 weeks. But um, I have found that most of my patients are so thrilled by the way they look, people don't want to stop. I mean, they look fantastic. And so people just incorporate it into their regimen and, and keep going. Perfect. And are there any concerns at all if you have patients who've had skin cancer and using this product? Um, that is a great question. Um, you know, sometimes the concern is brought up with growth factor products, although it hasn't ever been, you know, shown with medical grade growth factor products. But because um, Definage is creating a new basal cell, which is creating new keratinocytes, um, there's no concern with skin cancer, and it's actually much safer to use in people who may have, you know, hundreds of skin cancers all over their body as opposed to someone who's just had one, um, because um, you're not working on tired old basal cells and tired old keratinocytes, which may have had significant damage throughout a lifetime of, like, heavy sun exposure. Um, these are fresh new cells, just like they'd be in a baby. So there's actually, that's why the product is actually safer on people that have had, like, a heavy uh, can skin cancer history. Yeah. And there's a question on, um, will this product have any effect on vellus hair on the face? So if someone's had laser hair removal and is left with the real fine hair. Um, no, it has, it doesn't have any effect. And, you know, it doesn't have any effect even if people have like hypertrichosis or excessive hair um, on the face. It doesn't have any effect on that either. And is it okay to use this product uh, if you have a patient who has active acne or active rosacea with the pustules? Should they be using this or wait until it's cleared? So because it's um, oil-free and non-comedogenic, it shouldn't negatively affect acne um, or rosacea. Um, I actually have both acne and rosacea. <laughs> and so when I first started using it, I, I always get nervous about trying new products, but I always try them before I sell them in my office to make sure that I'm not selling something that's going to create a lot of problems for other people down the road. And I actually saw that it helped my rosacea uh, significantly. And I have the papulopustular type of rosacea. So I saw decreases in the number of red bumps and pustules on my face when I was using the you know, definage, especially in the summertime when I have more problems with the heat. Mm. And another question we had had to do with the microneedling treatment. And um, yes. in some cases, you had recommended waiting 48 hours to start applying um, and that some people told they can start applying it in the first 24 hours after treatment. Um, so we're wondering, what, what is the recommendation and does it depend on the aggressiveness of your microneedling treatment? So the company has put out an official statement to not apply Definage until 48 hours uh, post any type of microneedling with or without RF or even with ablative RF um, because, um, you know, it has been shown with azorbic acid or vitamin C that people can get granulomas applying that directly after microneedling. And so um, that, you know, the official advice with that is also to wait 48 hours, even though there are people who don't. Um, and so Definage has taken more of a conservative approach and said, let's wait 48 hours after microneedling so it doesn't cause any kind of side effect. And then a follow-up question to that was, what do you recommend in those first 48 hours post microneedling? Um, like for like application to the face? Right. Um, so a couple of products have been shown safe to, um, apply after microneedling or microneedling with RF, um, uh, BioCream, but not BioCream Reach by Neocutis. You can apply directly to the face, um, even with like fractional blade of RF. Um, and then Elastin has a product, um, called their Skin Nectar. Um, which is actually made to be a post-procedure product. And you can use that with anything from microneedling, microneedling with RF to CO2 or erbium. Terrific. And we have two questions I'm going to put together, but one um, was asking, have you ever used this for a patient with vitiligo? And there was also a question on whether this is helpful with um, AKs or benign pigmented lesions. 
Um, I have not used it in a patient with vitiligo. I ha it's not that I've avoided it. I just haven't had a person with vitiligo interested in using it. <laughs> um, and then benign pigmented lesions, such as what? Like an SK? Yes, like SKs sure. and AKs. Well, so for seborrheic keratosis, those are benign growth on the skin, so it's not going to remove a growth from your face. Um, you know, I don't use this to treat actinic keratoses. Um, I use more traditional methods such as, you know, cryotherapy, photodynamic therapy, or the, you know, creams that are FDA approved to treat actinic keratoses. So do I have people with actinic keratoses that use Definage? Yes, but I'm not using it to treat the actinic keratoses. But and I do you, kind of similar to this question, use it on people that have severe hyperpigmentation and melasma. And it significantly oh, helps. Okay, oh, because that was another question. If somebody has uh, more pronounced brown spots either on the body or the face, will this be helpful for them? Yeah, if it if it's if it's not like stuck on seborrheic keratoses, but actual, you know, solar lentigines, other diffuse hyperpigmentation or melasma, yes. And it works wonderfully well. Okay, now I have a question. I'm going to read this one. Based on the science, would you potentially see a change? Um, I'm trying to understand. I might need someone to clarify. But it's a based on science, would you potentially see a change from baby stem cells before immune issues occurred? So I'm not sure if that's a question about what kind of, because I don't think it's an actual growth factor in the product. It's a it's a peptide. There's no growth in factors in Definage, yeah. And you're not changing the type of stem cell, you're just making fresh basal cells. Right. So just it's like when you have a just like, like you have a just like when you have a wound, you have a missing basal cell there in your skin because there's a hole. So, you know, when you have a wound, the LGR6 positive master stem cell makes a new basal cell to fill the hole or whether you need one or a hundred, and then it makes new keratinocytes to make a new epidermis. So you're not making, you're not changing the type of like mesenchymal stem or the type of adult stem cell that's in there. Okay, great. And and if I didn't, if, if we didn't address that in terms of what that question was, please, by all means, let me know. And then we also had a question of what are, what are you retailing this for in terms of what are, what is the cost to the patient? So, um, we retail everything for exactly what the company recommends. So the Clinical Power Trio retails for $285. The Bio Serum alone is $165. The Barrier Balance Cream is $95. The Mask is $55. And we had a question, because we do have a little bit of time is um, we have some questions of sort of how do the defensins differ from the plant stem cells that we hear about in topicals and, and other growth factors. And I think you covered some of that in your first few slides, but people had difficulty hearing you. So they were wondering if you could go back and explain some of that. Yeah, in sure. Let me see here. Pull this up here. So... Um, the, the plant stem cells are not human, so they're much less effective in people than things that are human derived. And so most of the growth factor products that are available that are medical grade, um, they are human derived growth factors. And then there's a lot of good quality peptide products out there, those are synthetic. So they're not human derived, but they're created to target, you know, um, different molecules in our um, dermis to produce collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid, different types of collagen, things like that. The defensins are, that are in Definage are synthetic copies of human alpha and beta defensins. So they're not from a human being, but they're synthetic copies that to your body look exactly like um, human alpha and beta defensins. 
Jeffrey, and that is actually all of the questions we had. So thank you so much for this great presentation. And if anyone has questions and follow up, please feel free to to email me or Dr. Curcio, and we'd be happy to follow up with you. And thank you so much to all the attendees for tuning in. Thank you.